coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Breathitt County Bobcats prepare for a big game after a season full of hardship and heartache. And a Kentucky University reaches a multi-million dollar settlement with the family of a student wrestler who died hours after working out on campus. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Dakota Maker at 632 here, almost 633, and it's almost Friday. It, today's Thursday. <laughs> Thanks so much for waking up with us. Let's take it over to Brandon for a look at our forecast. And Brandon, ever since I learned that it is Thursday, I just feel like I've just kept saying it. Yeah, because it's Friday Eve. It is. We're getting closer to Friday. I dare, you know, I dare won't say it's Saturday Eve. I started, I shh, shh, stop. Hey, I have a microphone. Mm -mm. There's no, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say the other thing tomorrow either. That's, that's I do as I do as I please. There's only here. one Eve during mm -mm. a normal week. Mm -mm. Friday Eve. All right, whatever you say. That's right. Forecast this morning. You head out to Lake Cumberland, and you see again not a whole lot of action out there. Looks like maybe the moon shining on the water there this morning. It's hard to tell, but it looks like there's a few clouds out there. May just be some of the lights there in the distance shining on the water, but it's a good looking scene out there this morning. It's chilly though. 28 Somerset, 26 Irvin, 34 Moorhead and Jackson, 24 in Clintwood this morning, 32 in Pikeville, 28 in Harlan, 24 in Manchester, and 23 over in Grundy this morning. Day planner heading up, but clouds are going to move in as we go deeper into the day. We'll see 62 this afternoon, dry during the day, but tonight, that is a different story. Talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Dakota? Brennan, thank you. It's been a tough season for the Breathitt County Bobcat basketball team. After historic flooding impacted the county, their coach, the legendary B.B. King, died in December. Grayson Passmore caught up with the team last night as they were preparing to compete at Rupp Arena in the boys' Sweet 16. It's, it's been a, a storybook type year for us. Didn't start out, started more like a horror story. Breathitt County's Kyle Moore is the high school football coach and athletics director. And after the death of boys basketball coach B.B. King in December, he's also taken on the role as interim coach there. Well, these guys, I've known them their whole lives since they were little, so uh, I, feel, you know, I feel comfortable around those guys and they feel comfortable around me. And it went a lot better, obviously, than, than uh, what you think coming in when you got to talk about a football coach coaching basketball. But Moore is no stranger to the court. He played back in his day, and he comes from a long line of coaches like his mother. It would have been hard enough to make the Sweet 16, even without the challenges the team faced this year. It's such a hard thing to do. Our school ha hasn't been to the Sweet 16 since 1996. I was a freshman in high school. This is a team that lost their coach midseason, and a community that lost so much in the July floods. We've been through hard times for the past couple months, and they start just see good times coming up and they just get behind us and support us. It brings the whole community together. Shooting guard Luke Bellamy says it's actually the trials they've been through this year that have shaped them into the team they are today. I think just the team bonding together and see, seeing the smiles on people's faces from us winning, it's just been awesome. Because after the year they've had, this town needed something to cheer for. You know, we've been, I've been a part of state championship teams and uh, a Sweet 16 year, team years ago. And, you know, this one seems uh, to have our community just in really high spirits, more, than, more, more, more so than in a long time. In Lexington, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Breathitt County plays Mel this morning at 11 at 6. Martin County plays Frederick Douglass. And during the late game at 8.30, North Laurel plays GRC. The people of Leslie County are mourning the loss of a longtime coach, teacher, and administrator. Leslie County Schools announced the death of Lisa Wilson yesterday. She was a retired teacher and who served as head coach of the Leslie County volleyball team. During her time as a coach, her teams saw 289 wins, seven district titles, three All-A championships, and three 14th runner-up trophies. Leslie County Schools honored her in a Facebook post saying, quote, she will always be remembered for her dedication to our Leslie County students. Her legacy will live on, end quote. Well, many are mourning the unexpected loss of an Eastern Kentucky health leader and businessman. Ernie Scott died at his home Sunday in Letcher County. He was the director of the Kentucky Office of Rural Health for 11 years. 
He also owned the general store at Pine Mountain Crossing. He is his visitation will be this evening from five until eight at the Lewis Creek Pentecostal Church. The funeral will be at the church Friday at one o'clock. Ernie Scott was only 46 years old. The University of the Cumberlands reached a multi-million dollar settlement with the family of Grant Brace. He was a member of the men's wrestling team. He died hours after on campus workouts in August 2020. The settlement includes payments of more than $14 million. The university's agreement to engage in a heat illness training project and the promotion of the Brace family's work to raise awareness of heat related injuries. Now, officials with the university said it will continue to ensure protocols and its athletics department align with NAIA standards and hopes the university's decision to settle the case will respect the Brace family's loss. A jury trial scheduled for this summer in the case against Kim Davis will be rescheduled. The trial will decide what damages the former Rowan County clerk might owe a Moorhead couple whose civil rights she violated by refusing a marriage license. Earlier this week, a federal judge scheduled that trial for July 11th. Well, we've learned there was an administrative error in setting that date, and it will have to be changed right now. A new date has not yet been set. House Bill 153 aims at making Kentucky a Second Amendment sanctuary state, and now it's headed to Governor Andy Beshear's desk. Chad Hedrick reports on the legislation. Somehow with guns, nobody wants to believe that they're hurting anybody, that they're costing us anything. Passionate debate Wednesday before Kentucky senators voted to what supporters say makes Kentucky a Second Amendment sanctuary state, an attempt to block any future federal bans on firearms. We see across the world nations that have restricted Firearms from their citizens are essentially slaves to their government. They do not have a way to defend themselves from tyrannical overreach. And that was one of the reasons the Second Amendment was put into our Constitution. Opponents say it is a slippery slope and puts police in a spot where they themselves are criminals by not enforcing federal laws. The oath of office that they take states that I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth. That is an impossible situation where they could be charged for supporting the Constitution of the United States. Freshman Senator Lindsey Tishner presented the bill on the floor and said this comes down to blocking potential bans on legal ownership. I believe firmly the people of Kentucky want their Second Amendment rights upheld and I believe this bill should pass. The legislation did pass despite three Republicans voting no. That was Chad Hedrick reporting. Also in Frankfurt, there was another big step in the move to legalize sports betting in Kentucky. House Bill 551 is headed to the full Senate. If made law, the horse racing industry would regulate sports betting parlors at track owned facilities and you can even place bets on phones or mobile devices. Coming up on 641, some chilly temperatures out there this morning, but not as cold as yesterday. No teens, but getting closer in Clintwood and Jonesville this morning. Down to 21, 23, the next closest spot in Grundy. Everybody else, mid to upper 20s and low 30s out there this morning. Hot spots, 34 in Moorhead and Jackson. Statewide, we're seeing temperatures in the Tri-Cities over in southwest Virginia, east, uh, northeast Tennessee at 24, 24 also in Ashland, but 40. Back out toward Owensboro, Paducah's up to 46, Carbondale, Illinois up to 45, Nashville's at 38. Out the door forecast, you're going to feature some warmer temperatures here in our region this afternoon, but we're also going to pick up some clouds later in the day. It stays dry during the day. Southwest winds will take us up to 62 a little bit later on. Dakota? All right, Brandon, thank you so much. When we come back here on Mountain News this morning, the Environmental Protection Agency finalizes a rule to cut down on harmful smog and pollution coming from power plants. Stay with us. We'll be right back.